though COVID has uh, really uh, broken the, the, the chains of co-living and uh, people were fearing to even join a co-living space, but at least now, yesterday, pre the president relieved some of the uh, measures that were put to curb uh, the COVID-19 thing. So at least we, we are seeing more people coming in asking for spaces mm -hmm. because they are now able to travel into the country or into Nairobi, Mombasa or even Kisumu where we have our locations. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, people basically embracing the new normal. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And you've mentioned something which is very important. You know, the nitty gritty small things that are very much important when it comes to cleanliness. The, and you mentioned a couple. Are these apartments coming like uh, full furnished? And uh, you've mentioned uh, on how you use the privacy aspect of it. But let's look at how my safety, right? Are there rules to be followed uh, just for safety for your clients? Yeah. So basically we have... Uh, common standard rules for co-living um, and as a company we've been able to uh, establish that through a contract that uh, we give to all our tenants mm -hmm. all our members um, and if they agree to abide with the with the rules then if they follow them very well they will be able to coexist with others right. yes and the aspect of furnished are they furnished apartments benefits Oh yeah, so um, they all furnished apartments. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, um, when Isaac mentioned, and 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 you also like stress something that the small things. So when we were coming up with the solution, uh, we asked ourselves the questions of, okay, so people ask us why they should share spaces. People don't even want to share spaces, and so we went uh, and, and and started doing research on. <laughs> Why exactly don't you want mm -hmm. to share? So m we were just trying to get um, clients from the clients who they actually think and why they think they shouldn't share. So that way we don't address problems that uh, doesn't exist. So furnishing was one of the main issues. Because if we left the space empty and then we brought people together to furnish, then we're going to have a problem where people say I probably brought in a coach more expensive than the dispenser you brought in mm -hmm. and then it would be like a huge issue yeah so it starts from furnishing the entire apartment mm -hmm. and then providing like um, uh, the concierge services the cleaning uh, uh, aspect and probably people who might want extra services like if you want food cooked for you well you can just make like the request and you'll get your food prepared mm -hmm. if you just want to make a normal order from a restaurant you can still do that um, and yeah, you, uh, your food will be delivered. So we're providing more than just a space to live. Mm -hmm. We're giving people the lifestyles that they're actually looking for, but at affordable cost. Okay. Yeah. Right. What sort of experience will your clients uh, have when they get to be part of the village world? And how many branches are there? And where are you guys located at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, uh, you know, our slogan uh, when we were starting was redefining modern living. Mm -hmm. uh, but over time, we realized that co-living is supposed to be fun, okay? Uh, people are supposed to enjoy living in a space. And we realized that by building the community aspect that we keep on mentioning since we began, this was actually the best way. Mm. So you have a couple of friends you're living with, and then you're like, okay, so I've been working since Monday to Friday. What am I doing for this weekend? Mm -hmm. And then you have these friends so like, oh, so I know there's a show in town we could actually attend. I know the best restaurant we could actually go to. So you form kind of a social cycle. Uh, a, a circle where you also get f uh, to have fun beyond just where you're living and where you're working. Mm -hmm. So that that's basically one of the experiences. Mm -hmm. But also the other experience is life is much easier in a co-living space uh, for the fact that cleaning is done for you, right? Most of the services are actually done for you and then you can make the request that you want. So if you wake up in the morning and you feel like today I just don't want to prepare breakfast then yeah you can just give us a call <laughs> and you'll it's get easier the it's yeah, so yeah, easy like that yeah exactly okay. so uh, i mean these experiences are just really small small we're just doing the very small stuff because we realize life is about those very small things mm. yeah those are what actually makes life 
more fun. Mm -hmm. um, your salary might matter. Like a lot of things might matter. But mm -hmm. then what you do beyond something you could actually hold on to at the end of the day is what is really critical. And that's the space and the environment you're actually providing. But the other thing that I might want to stress is we have monthly events. Uh, for like these young people, okay. So um, we can say it's 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 a coffee, uh, it's a normal meet and greet. Mm -hmm. uh, people are hanging out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I mean, basically we have different themes for these events, okay. Uh, depending on what we did like last month. So if we did meet and greet, uh, then I mean most of mm -hmm. these people then know each other. Yes. Then now we can go into maybe. Uh, a space where it's a professional networking session so we bring people beyond the community so you're able to interact with people also outside that network that you already have within the village yeah and, and it's fun for we're hosting expatriates we're hosting locals um, we also host expatriate locals so like if they're people from Kisumu <laughs> and they're living here in Nairobi <laughs> and they're like so yeah. I'm in Nairobi, I'm in Nairobi. And I just want like people to hang out with yeah. yeah I'm here to work for maybe one month I'm attached here for a, um, a, a program or something I'm living in the village community and then you get like to just connect with other people in Nairobi from other countries from, uh, other from countries. outside mm. uh, yeah uh, Kenya so there's so much there's just so much to be experienced in what i'm that. getting is that you just uh, have an opportunity to experience different culture self-development exactly. yeah, uh, yeah. you just communicate just making life easier yeah, and yeah. better when yeah. it comes to community living that yeah. Is, yeah? And advantage is uh, currently we are located in mombasa mm -hmm. Uh, of course, we're here. Mm -hmm. We're in Naivasha. We Where is here? Our viewers may not know where we are. We're in Nairobi. Uh -huh. And then we're in Kisumu. Oh, so, yes. if, if, if you're from the lakeside like me, mm -hmm. I would probably want to go to Mombasa mm -hmm. or Naivasha, right? Mm -hmm. So, if I'm co sharing a space in Kisumu, mm -hmm. then on our platform, you can actually just get an access for a one week. You can book a one week vacation to Mombasa. Oh. In those same spaces, those because those co living spaces are located in different places. So now you don't have to spend a lot of money booking for a, a different accommodation. All you need to do even hotels, yeah. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So all you need to do is you just moving from one home mm -hmm. to another home. Different people, different experiences probably much cheaper but you also get to experience the culture and there are no like you know there's usually strict restriction with certain institutions uh, probably like hotels also uh, but here we just give you like a home so i mean uh, you the way you operate in that other co-living space in kisumu the same rules since it's the same company they still apply all right yeah. as a luck final if i'm traveling maybe i want to go to kisumu so all i have to do is just reach out to you guys and uh, tell you like i'll be in kisumu for this particular period if it's a week two weeks a month i just let you know prior and you're going to just make it work for me yeah so uh, the the process is pretty much easy mm -hmm. uh, you just give us a call uh, or you send us an email or uh, you actually go through our website where you can be able to book from and uh, the the process is very easy you just tell us the dates mm -hmm. we confirm the availability of the space mm -hmm. and uh, the timings then we're able to book you in and you're able to to make a payment okay going back to the business aspect of this what are the, some of the financial lessons that you've learned since back in 2018 till date right now um very great uh, lessons financially mm -hmm. and especially now after covid ha mm -hmm. happened mm -hmm. um there are so many things that had to change like uh, your spending uh, budget our spending mm -hmm. budget had to like slow down uh, because we were unsure when covid was starting out mm -hmm. and um, some things that we learned is uh, during pandemics or crisis mm -hmm. um, customers can react in very different ways mm -hmm. and so if you had some specific financial metrics you had set forth then it will become very difficult to uh, achieve them but um, because you want to be a dynamic company then you want to adopt very fast to the new changing norm and so we we've been able to uh, 
find out ways to to maneuver through the COVID-19 with <laughs> very little funds, minimizing our movement as a, as a team uh, and uh, being able to only invest in what we require. So those are, are like our key major lessons, um, specifically after COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that we discovered uh, with uh, COVID-19 is uh, people need to make money. And so we have people who have furnished apartment who are relying on uh, maybe tourists. So for the last six months, we've not had tourists come into the country. So for us, we saw that as an opportunity. And uh, at the moment, we're able to work with uh, people who own furnished apartment. Mm -hmm. We're able to tell them our model and how it operates. Mm -hmm. And if they agree, mm -hmm. we sign an agreement with mm -hmm. them and then we're able to get guests for them. Mm -hmm. So or, or actually long-term members to be mm -hmm. able to take up their space because they need to consistently make an income from their house. So we are telling people, you must not rent your full apartment to one single person. Now you can rent out to a few other people. Maybe it's if it's a three-bedroom apartment, you can give it to three people and then they're able to share costs. Uh, you have a maintained financial income coming in as well as giving an opportunity for young people to be able to experience a, a specific location and they can pay at an affordable uh, rate. All right. Yeah. And Boomface would like to find out, yeah, what's the average price uh, for a one-bedroom apartment uh, in your buildings, in any of your buildings? Um, I mean, uh, before I give average, uh, it's, it's, it's really ideal for me to, to just give a few um, issues Well, how like just the housing space works. Go I mean, ahead, yeah. everybody understands mm -hmm. that pricing depends on, of course, one location. Absolutely. So um, affordability question mm -hmm. is also um, directly attached to the location mm -hmm. and, of course, the services that are being provided. Okay. So um, I think we have a range mm -hmm. from about uh, 20,000 on the up market. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I mean, we go way uh, up to about 80 mm -hmm. K um, uh -huh. and yeah, per room. And mm -hmm. for like the 80 K is, uh, I mean, it's more than furnished. Uh, swimming pool, gym, close to the mall, you get cleaning uh, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Literally, you, I mean, we call it luxury living, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you get like literally everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but also on the downside is we realize that even though young people are able to um, afford this, Okay. But they also get strained at some point because uh, of the salaries that they are actually earning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think we've been working day and night to try and um, get as low as 15,000 uh, for these people uh, because then um, in the up market, if we can get that, then I mean, young people will be able to get value for that money. In terms of uh, vacation, uh, mm -hmm. homes, uh, if you're looking at places in Mombasa, we go as low as 2,500, yeah, and probably it's close to the beach, it's probably a beach house. Uh, in Kisumu, mm -hmm. in areas like Dunga Beach, mm -hmm. uh, Milimani, again, as low as 2,500, uh, but you can rent an entire villa. Uh, yeah, if you're looking <laughs> at that. If you're boiling uh, like that. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, one thing about Village, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. is that we decided that even though we are targeting a market, one thing you need to give a people, or the consumers, is options. Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's options. Mm -hmm. What can I choose from? So if this month, well, you're boiling, as you're saying, mm -hmm. yeah, you can choose what fits you. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're also looking at to really extremely cut down on cost, okay. but still get the experience, mm -hmm. then we still have those options for you. All right. Isaac, how are the investors looking at this situation? I do you mention that uh, one of the uh, streams of making fina uh, financial help, one of the streams is three investors. So how are the investors looking at this situation of co-living? So uh, basically it's been um, a global trend, co-living. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at uh, markets like US, uh, Europe, 
and uh, even some parts of Asia, Kolim has been uh, well spread. But here in Africa, because of our cultural uh, beliefs of uh, not being able to share a space with someone you don't know, mm -hmm. or even sharing a space with um, both genders, uh, it's something that uh, most people are not very open to. But for us, we want to tell people, if you know your dignity, then you can be able to live with another person. And because of that, investors are very excited because of uh, co-living spaces. They are trying to solve an affordability issue. And uh, like uh, you remember, affordable housing in Kenya is something that uh, we might not be able to achieve a hundred percent by constructing building, mm -hmm. but uh, if we can be able to also look at alternatives to technology, then that is something that will be viable for the market because Kenya is a tech-driven country yes. and uh, the youths are tech-savvy. So basically, if you're able to give them a service through a platform, then it, it becomes interesting for the investors. Okay. So um, investors are excited and uh, they are looking at how, how fast can you grow? Right. How fast can you be able to attract more people to live in your space? Mm -hmm. And if you can be able to achieve that, I definitely uh, assure you that uh, money will come along your way. And uh, we are looking for more investment opportunities uh, with various organizations out there, both locally and um, uh, externally. And uh, it's an exciting journey, I'll say, uh, basically. And uh, with COVID-19, people are adopting to the new norm where you actually believe that you can work from home. So if you're working from home, you're going to look for a location that has everything that you might need not to move so many uh, places so that you're able to settle in one place, work from home and be able to earn your money, but also access a community. So it's an interesting change of uh, dynamics we have in the country and specifically if we are looking at how does the next 10 years look like for the young people and you know most uh, african countries they have like very young ages of people like uh, an average age of 19 years uh, if you remember a survey that was done a few years ago so uh, we are looking at how do we actually bring trust to these people that they can be able to share spaces as early as today so that within a few years the person who is 19 today mm -hmm. when they graduate from campus mm -hmm. they're able to uh, work in a location that they feel comfortable but also live in a location where they feel like uh, they, are, they, are, they are they are part of it the part of it it's a home it's yeah, a it's community a it's, it's family a yes. uh, what are a couple of challenges that you major challenges that you're facing um I would say the main challenge at the moment has been uh, being able to break the, the cultural barrier mm -hmm. um, in, in the Kenyan society. And especially um, people ask, how do you share spaces with other people mm -hmm. without... Uh, especially the gender part. Yes, mm -hmm. especially the gender part. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe most uh, men and women, um, you, you went through high school as a boy's school. Mm -hmm. You went through campus and you lived in uh, uh, a dormitory that was male gender mm -hmm. or uh, maybe female. female gender. And so it becomes very hard for these people to actually uh, think of sharing an apartment as an alternative to affordable housing. So that has been the, uh, the greatest challenge we've been uh, trying to tackle and we believe we'll be able to tackle as uh much as we are able to talk to people because when you have conversation with people you give them another aspect of life mm -hmm. and uh, those who are open enough they will adopt it the rest will adopt as they go by okay bonface would like to find out a couple of achievements just as we wind up achievements i, I think for me um and, and and also as a company uh, one of our achievements one thing that we look at the top one is the impact mm -hmm. um, that you're able to create for the few clients that we've been able to sign up because uh, I mean if we're able to help one person cut down on cost get affordable housing and live in a space they feel secure safe and you know reduce just the constraints that comes with you know the other alternative okay. of 
not so affordable housing then i think that can be like one of the things we can be most proud of mm -hmm. but also the other achievement i think it's just being able to build a team around these um, startups are no easy um, running businesses is not easy i mean if you're just starting up you're trying to build system you're trying to build structures uh, a lot of you think in a different way uh, but our team has been able to just build up around that specific system and just believing that this will work uh, despite people feeling like co-living is not something that could happen but we've really uh, been insist um, uh, insisting on just doing the research uh, we now understand uh, probably the market more because of all frequent research getting client and customer perspective around this how they want us to provide more efficient services and 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 i think with that data we able to just tell the market uh, this is how you need to work this is the path you need to take if you're gonna create an impact to these young people and at the same time also make money uh, but the other of course impact is building a village for the last <laughs> two years i mean i think for me that has been an achievement and okay. I, I don't know what isaac will say about that but for me mm -hmm. well that has been achievement so we are building a company to where it is actually but we still look forward uh, to uh, just working on this uh, we look forward to hosting more young people we look forward to uh, people changing perspective and just having a different eye to like see this but most importantly i'm looking forward to co-living changing gender issues around a uh, housing aspect like you kept on mentioning sharing an apartment and he is a male gender and a female gender i mean mm -hmm. it shouldn't be like these are two different things i mm -hmm. mean this is a humanity mm -hmm. I, 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 by the nowhere i thought people were created to be separated or mm -hmm. to be defined by their genders okay. yeah so this is one of the things that i'm looking forward to and if village is able to break this I think it would be kind of a lifetime achievement. All right. Uh, as we wind up, Isaac, I'd like to find out, uh, uh, for the sake of my viewers, how can guys reach out to you if they want to keep this conversation going and just learn more about uh, Village? Um, so you can find us through our social media platforms. Um, we have Facebook, The Village, uh, T-H-E-V-L-A-G-E. -E. Uh, and uh, Twitter, the same Twitter handle the, at the village, uh, LinkedIn at the village, and we also have uh, our website uh, www.thevillage.com. All right, as simple as that, that's how you guys can reach out to and find out more about the village. Thank you guys for creating time to be with us. This is a very interesting conversation to have pertaining concerning co living. So, if you have any question uh, about co living spaces, all you have to do is reach out to them. The Village World uh, Limited, that's their website. Yeah. Absolutely. So, at Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. At Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out uh, across all my socials. So, right now, we're taking a a quick break and we'll be right back. <laughs>